One constant message we receive from science fiction that we heard from Octavia Butler in her first created fictional scripture is that we need diversity to thrive. We need to unite. Now, when we think of other sci-fi, what's the word I'm looking for? Like sci-fi, really famous, important pieces in our culture, what do we often think about? Star, Star Wars, Star Trek, both of them. But Star Trek is the other series that really enabled people to imagine a very different kind of world, right? In a time when the United States was living with deep racial di divides, division, and oppression, Star Trek showed us a very different way of being. Now, in talking with your worship weavers about this service, they all had a lot of ideas, and Star Trek was important to a lot of folks. Now, Lisa Fur said in Reflections on Unitarian Universalism, this, too, is one of our great hopes, one of our great goals, right? To work on being more united. Here, under one roof, we have people of different theological beliefs and persuasions. We have agnostics, atheists, Christians, Buddhists, Jewish, all here worshiping together in sometimes kind of wacky and silly and sometimes serious ways, right? And Lisa says, one of our calls is to do this work now, right? Starting with ourselves, with humanity, with other animals in our planet, with our planet, right? Starting to unite, starting to truly care for one another so that the world we long for does indeed come into existence, right? This is one of the powers of science fiction, is that we can imagine the world that we long for and it can help to fuel our work to get there. Now, the other magic of science fiction and other works of speculative fiction, which Kendall will help us figure out what it is in a moment, but Speculative fiction, I believe, is any fiction that happens in a reality or timeline that is not ours. And science fiction is kind of a subset of speculative fiction. So anyways, science fiction and also Afrofuturism especially lies in the ability for those who are oppressed in our current times to imagine a difference in the future, to envision what that world would look like. Now, Octavia Butler, who we heard from this morning in this parable series, she has talked about, if you've not read it, it's really, really great. I would highly recommend it. But in the parable series, Octavia Butler writes, as well as many of her other books, most of the protagonists are black. Many of them are gender queer, or gender as a construct is just a lot different than what it is today. Because for Octavia Butler, as a black queer woman author, she was able to use her imagination and her skills as a writer to create a very different kind of world, right? A world where she and people like her were able not to just survive, but to thrive. Science fiction, imagination gives us power. It reminds us that we are indeed shaping the world we live in now and the future with every action and in action, right? Science fiction, imagining the world can give us power and motivation even when we are amidst crisis. Now, my confession here, the difficult part, is that for some of us, I know at least for me, it can be difficult to imagine what that future we long for really can look like in 100 years or 200 years, right? Especially in a time of climate crisis, thinking seriously about what the best outcome would be in 100 years can be a little bit scary. 
right? So my original intent of this service was to have myself and a couple of other people cast these beautiful visions of what life could look like in 100 years if, the, if love won. The reality is that none of us were really able to do it, right? Now, and I think some of it, you know, whatever is, is time and reality and uh, pregnancy, insomnia, yada, yada, yada. But, but I think a deeper truth is that being wide-eyed as we are and real about our current world, it is hard to think about what things will look like in 100 years and 200 years and 300 years if we continue on this trajectory. Now, I think the hope is that it's a lot easier to do that together in community, right? Because we all have different imaginations and different hopes and visions, different skill sets. So that's one way we can do it, by talking with one another about what we hope for our future. That's actually one of the things you all are doing in your stewardship campaign, right? What are we hoping for? What are we trying to build here to get us to that better tomorrow? And the other great thing is that not everyone struggles as much with writing a beautiful vision of what the future could be as I do. This is why we have things like science fiction, right? So the reason why we had science fiction as our reading today is to show us that science fiction authors can actually help us to unlock our imagination, our vision, of what that world could be like. Because it's just not gonna be all of our gifts, and that's okay. This is why we have speculative fiction and science fiction to be a source that we can lean on. The parable series that we read from, the kind of like really intense, like if you do not unite, you will be robbed and murdered, right? This was because Octavia Butler was writing in a kind of apocalyptic time of climate crisis and class crisis where truly people were needing to steal from one another in order to survive and live. And the protagonist of this story, Lauren, said, no, me and my people are not going to do that. We are not going to steal, we are not going to kill, we are going to come together, be united, take care of one another, and bring other people along with us. For she had a vision not just for her and her people, but for all people, which is why she started this religion of earth seed, to bring more people united, and then practice it here a lot on earth, because there was a lot of work to do on Earth and there wasn't the technology yet to be going out to space, but her hope was that they could perfect and practice this way of living together in true community care, truly together, so that when they were ready to cast new life amongst the stars and other planets, that new life would have a different way of being would be a community grounded in love and care and not torn apart like the world she had had to experience. Science fiction helps us to imagine how we can, even right here and right now, build a different kind of world. And isn't that what church community is all about? practicing what it is to be human, practicing with all of our foibles and failings what it is to be a better person, to be a better people and community, to truly take care of one another. Now, we're gonna hear just very briefly from Kendall about some ways that science fiction and speculative fiction has inspired and grounded her so that we might start thinking about how it might shift things for us. I should say that Kendall, you can come up, is um, a seminarian right now and is, um, our congregation is sponsoring her, which really means we signed a paper that said, yep, we know Kendall, she's good, we're glad she's in seminary. So it's good to have you here, seminary. Kendall. Thank you. Thank you, Kayla. This is more of a poetic reflection than a straightforward reflection. 
What are the tiny ways in which we, you and I, can build a new world? I did not think this way before. I did not think this way before 1999, before becoming a mother, before hearing ideas of the great turning. I did not think this way before I watched water closely and lived through a death or two. I did not think this way before moving away from a place where the scale of the earth was in front of my eyes every day or before I moved to Richmond where the layers of history in the concrete threaten to overwhelm the present sometimes. I did not know that we go on making the world every moment, which doesn't mean remove the past, but it can turn the past from ashes to sprouts. I did not think this way before reading speculative fiction written by Nalo Hopkinson, N.J. Jemison, Octavia Butler, Rebecca Roanhorse, S.A. Chakraborty, and others. When you begin to think of time as existing all at once, as it is offered in some of those narratives, rather than time as a linear, unidirectional progression, when you begin to imagine that the things that happened in the past leave a mark on the place in the now, no matter how slight, it leaves a door open. It leaves the possibility of undoing the harm by doing, by doing something from connection, from true care in the moment that has impact on all the moments. What are the tiny ways in which we, you and I, can build a new world? We can change the frame. We can change our guiding questions. We can embrace uncertainty and go bravely towards greater care and connection. We live the past through our new stories. We restory the future. After all, isn't religion all speculative fiction? <laughs> Within the possibility of the ever-present stories, religious stories, and secular stories of destruction and apocalypse is always the rebirth of something else. So what would that look like? What would your building blocks be? What are the tiny ways in which we, you and I, can build a new world? Mine will start with living soil and music and dancing, attention and presence warm curiosity, shelter, food, water, education, and peace without question, values-driven systems that are flexible, responsive, and open to the new gifts that arrive with each child born. If we use our minds to project into the future and look back on the now, we can become in our wildest dreams as Marion Wright Edelman likes to say, strategic fleas or healing microbes. We can be symbiotic organisms with our neighbors, human and non. We can be frequencies, gestures, the air itself to each other. What are the tiny ways in which we, you and I, can build a new world? What are the tiny ways in which we, you and I, can build a new world? There is so much potential when we can unleash our imagination and we have learned so much already in crisis. I get hope from how this community and so many others turn towards one another when COVID hit and continue to take care of one another. Right? Though not an apocalypse, we have learned some skills at how to survive and sometimes even thrive amidst disaster. So let us never forget those skills. Let the knowledge of what we have been able to do now and in the past inspire what we are able to accomplish in the future. We leave today asking, what do you want? 
the world to look like in 2061 or 2123 when this old time machine works again? And what can you do now? What tiny, small actions to bring that world into existence?